short on lecture and long on you guys get to work. Yay! All right, so what we're going to do today, a couple things. I'm going to actually talk to you about and give you an example of an actual persona and the type of thing that I'm going to be looking for in assignment four. And of course, you get assignment four today. Yay! The other thing that we're going to do is what I promised you on Tuesday. Who remembers what I promised you on Tuesday? <laughs> okay, I saw a hand in back and I can't understand everybody else. That we can start working on their stuff uh, I did say that, but that's not what I'm referring to. We have an activity. Yay, you're excited, right? So I know that you all went and you studied the lecture notes. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know the word study? I know it's hard. You guys, I know it doesn't make any sense at this time in the morning, right? <laughs> study. You guys think before that? What did I say before that? that you, I'm sure that you guys all studied the lecture notes and the book. Did anybody? No. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so I'm so glad I look very nice today, so you can distract me from what I'm saying. Maybe I'll forget. That's okay. I will torture you anyway. I do always have a ponytail. That's true. Because it's easy in the morning. You just... All right. How should I torture you first? All right. First, we'll do a quick review of yesterday. Yay. <laughs> Here we go. So, remember yesterday we were talking, yesterday, sorry, Tuesday, my days got blurred. Tuesday we were talking about personas. You guys all know what personas are now, right? Sort of, maybe. All right, and so there are a number of different types of personas. Now remember, in our class exercise today, you guys get to use the knowledge that you've gained about personas, specifically about different types of personas. Who remembers what a primary persona is? Um, primary user. Right, so it's the archetype of your primary user. Yeah, that's who you're going to focus on. Remember how many primary personas you have per interface? One for each interface. One per, for each interface. And when you are designing that interface, does Everything that your persona, your primary persona need, is it satisfied by that, by that interface? For your primary persona? Yes. Who remembers what a secondary persona is? Someone who fits in as a primary user except for a couple of things that would have to be changed, but they're few. Right, so a secondary persona, exactly, is someone who Everything that the primary persona needs, all of those needs are also the same in terms of your secondary persona, but your secondary persona has a few more little needs, little things that they need that you will include in the interface as long as it does not disenfranchise your primary persona. Okay, who remembers what a supplemental persona is? I'll give you my subtle hint. <laughs> Supplemental persona. You want another subtle hint? Oh. Yeah, look at the last bullet point. <laughs> okay, look at all the bullet points. Yeah, someone who you're not focusing on but still you meet all the requirements that you need to Right, so the supplemental persona is basically someone that has the same needs, you know, all the needs of the primary persona, satisfy the, the uh, supplemental persona, but someone says, wait a minute, this person's not represented. And even though you'll say, well, you know, but they're actually the same as the primary persona, they're like, yeah, well, maybe not. 
So you include them for completeness or, and or for political reasons. But all of their needs are met by the interface because their needs are the same as the primary persona. Make sense? OK, here's the tough one. What is a customer persona? The person making the buying decisions. The person making the buying decisions. Awesome. All right, so if I work at a large corporation and I'm an accountant, I'm going to be using the accounting software. But the CIO is the one who decides what accounting software we're purchasing. Who is the customer? The CIO. In that case, is the accountant your customer? No. It's the CIO. So try to make sure you keep that distinction in mind because we, when we automatically answer, we think of the user as the customer. And here it's a little bit different. What's a search persona? It is some, yes, someone who uses it, yes. A cashier, cashier is part of the example that I gave. Although in the example that I gave at the supermarket, the cashier isn't the one that's served. The customer, right. So when you go to the grocery store and the cashier scans everything, you are being served by that system. All right, so it is someone who does not directly use the product, but they are affected by the system. That, by the way, makes a great midterm exam. It just blinked on me. That thing just makes a great midterm exam question. Excuse me, sorry. Final exam question. <laughs> yeah, good thing you have the midterm already. All right, negative personas. What's a negative persona? Um, for example, let's say you're creating an app for people who are accountants, and you have a baseball player test it out. All right, so a negative persona would be like a baseball player if you are creating a, an, an app for, Isn't you know, for an accountant. Of course, and it wouldn't make any sense, as you said, to have the baseball player test it out because they're not an accountant. All right, so it's whoever is not the target of your design. And this can be really important, particularly when it comes to clarity and keeping your scope in check. 